Thank you for allowing me to have this time, Brother Rick. Thank you all all for being here. It's, uh, it's always good to be in the house of God. Uh, the message tonight, this message is based on a scripture found in James, chapter 1, verses 13, 14, and 15. Let no man say when, now notice God put in there, he said when. He didn't say if. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust has conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. We all have different, uh, we have different hairstyles. We like different food. We drive different cars. But there's one thing that we all have in common. And that's temptation. We all get tempted. It doesn't matter if you're lost. It doesn't matter if you're saved. Temptation will find you. When I think about temptation, when I think about doing something wrong, I feel remorseful. I feel regret. Uh, But it's when I give in to that sin that I know that I've failed again. We face temptations like overeating. Now, that may not be a big deal to some of you, but others, overeating is a big problem. We face temptations like drinking alcohol, like gambling, stealing, lust, the pride of life, and the list goes on and on. What I fail to remember when I get caught up in my own dilemma is that I'm not unique. We all have our own battles to fight. Point number one, as we have already established, temptation is a certainty. The first two people on earth uh, were tempted. Adam and Eve were placed in the garden. And in the garden, Eve was tempted to eat of the tree of, uh, of the knowledge of good and evil. She did. And then what did she do? She tempted Adam and he did eat. King David... He lusted after Bathsheba. He was in his, uh, in his bedroom uh, lounging on the couch and he decides he'll go out and get a breath of fresh air. He goes out and gets a breath of fresh air and what does he do? He looks down and there's Bathsheba. That's the time he should have turned around and gone back in. That's right. But he didn't do that. That resulted in adultery and a murder, murderous affair. Jesus was tempted. Satan tempted him to satisfy his hunger after he had been in the desert for 40 days. He offered Jesus the allure of power and authority over kingdoms and tempted Jesus to tempt God by throwing himself off the pinnacle of the temple. My question is, who do you think will be targeted most by temptation? Although every one of us will be uh, tempted, Satan especially wants the righteous people uh, to be tempted and to sin. Christians don't want to sin because of your obedience and because you truly seek the guidance of God. Your testimony will be ruined. He will attack you when you least expect it. A shapely looking young woman was walking through a store. She had a short skirt on and uh, as she walked through, the husband's eyes kind of, kind of followed her. And the wife, without looking up from what she was examining in the store, said, well, I hope it was worth the trouble you're in. It's so easy to yield to temptation. Yielding to temptation brings nothing but trouble, and it's never worth the price that we have to pay. It's no wonder that Jesus taught us to pray in Matthew 6, 13, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. God may let us experience trials from time to time. I'm sure we've all had trials in our lives, but he doesn't do that for any reason except to strengthen us. People say, if, if, if I want these things, 
and and if I want to do these things, then if I'm not supposed to, why do I enjoy them so much? God gave us life to enjoy, but there are boundaries that we have to stay within. Donuts are good, but if you eat a dozen of them, they'll make you fat. Taking a leisurely drive on a Sunday afternoon is good, it's pleasurable, but living life in the fast lane will kill you. Love between a married couple. It's sanctioned by God. It's beautiful. But unfaithfulness breeds disaster. Proverbs 5.15 said, Drink water out of your own cistern. In other words, be faithful to the one you're married to. Point number two, temptation is attractive. It's very attractive. Temptation is always presented in the best possible way. It's always fun or profitable or it looks good, but you never see the devastation that follows. The drunk driver who hits and kills a family just as he leaves the bar. Broken homes caused by lust. Empty bank accounts caused by gambling. While Satan lies and deceives you, uh, God will show you the truth. So what do we do? We're being attacked by Satan, and it's not something that's easy to overcome. Ephesians 6.12 said, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So remember this. Temptation often occurs after our greatest victories. When you feel like you're invincible, all of a sudden you're going to have a temptation to come your way. Example, just after Elijah had defeated the prophets of Baal at Mount Carmel, he was driven by fear that Jezebel would kill him just like she had vowed to do. What did he do? He fled into the wilderness and prayed that God would take his life. Up on a mountain, down in the valley. We will be vulnerable when we are tired, when we're weak, when we're depressed, and recognize these things are steps we can take to overcome temptation. Number one, to overcome temptation, you need to separate yourself. Recognize and stay away from those things or situations that might cause you to be tempted. If you were once a drinker, you can't go into the bar to reach a convert. You've just put yourself in the way of temptation. Scripture memorization. When he was tempted, Jesus used scriptures against Satan. We need to memorize some scripture, something that will help us during these times of temptation. The Holy Spirit. Ask for a filling of the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 5.18 says, Be not drunk with wine wherein there is excess, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Let me say this. Temptation is not a sin. It's when we give in to those, <clears throat> excuse me, it's when we give in to those wrong desires, it becomes sin. Yeah, that's right. You may think I'm, I'm thinking a thought and it's a bad thought. Uh, it's as good as the deed. But that's not true. It's not. Billy Graham once said, and I've heard our pastor say it too. Billy Graham once said, I can't keep a bird from flying over my head but I can keep him from building a nest in my hair. Today is a good day. It's a good day to review our commitment to the Lord, asking Him to forgive us of our sins, asking Him to keep us from tempting things or circumstances, to forgive us for our actions that disappoint Him and discourage us. You're welcome. All right, test time. What did, you, what did you get out of it? Somebody over this section? Y'all get anything? Y'all get anything out of that? You're bashful, aren't you? Okay, well, let's maybe try this center section, Brother Lloyd. Like drug. It is. And that love, sin, and death is LSD. Begins to draw you in. You, you like the feeling you get from it. It gives you a high. Yeah. All right. And over here, anybody get something from it? Anybody? Everyone is tempted. 
Even Jesus was tempted. He just didn't sin. And he did use the word of God. We saw that. Let me ask you a question. Now, this takes just a little bit of reasoning, but not, not a lot. Um, when you give in to temptation to sin, what does it hurt? It hurts your relationship. That's one thing. I mean, if you sin, you, you're, you're breaking his heart. And so you, you interrupt your relationship with the Lord. What else happens when you sin? What's, what's wrong with sin? Your testimony. He mentioned that, didn't he? It'll hurt your testimony. So if we're trying to lead our children in the right way, and they see us doing the wrong thing, they hear us cussing and doing things against other people that's unbiblical, our kids, no matter what we say, we can tell them, well, I don't want you to smoke or drink or cuss or anything like that. But if they see us doing those things, you think they're likely to listen to what we're saying or are they more likely to watch what we're doing? Yeah, yeah. What else does it hurt when you sin? If you give in to that temptation, what does it hurt? Hurt your relationship with Christ? Your It'll hurt your family? Yeah, what else? Hebrews chapter 12 says there is such a thing as chastisement. <laughs> and so we may think nobody's watching and we'll get away with this. But the problem is God's always watching, isn't he? Uh, here, here's one too. What about your conscience? Your conscience. If you give in to temptation, you're going to wreck something inside of you that says you shouldn't have done that. And the Holy Spirit's going to be working on the inside of you, saying, you shouldn't have done that. I went to Walmart yesterday. Uh, don't you just love going to Walmart? <laughs>